So now we're involved in downloading the data from the server using AJAX techniques. And the question is, what if the browser, the user's browser, can't handle AJAX techniques? What if, for example, if it wasn't able to create an XML HTTP request object? As you've already seen, the first thing this page does, this index.html example does, is when it's loaded, is it creates a variable named XML HTTP request object, sets it to false, and then uses this code to create a XML HTTP request object and assign it to that variable, as you see there. Now, early browsers, for example, browsers of Internet Explorer version 4.0, and 3.0 and 2.0 could not create XML HTTP request objects. They're only available in Internet Explorer 5.0 and later. That means virtually everybody who has Internet Explorer is using version 5.0 or later, but you may still end up with browsers that could not create XML HTTP request objects. So how do you handle a situation like that? Well, as you've just seen, the get data function is called when you want to download data from this from the server. Of course you don't have to call it get data, you can call it anything you like, but this is the function we've used in order to connect to the clickable button that the user can that the user can interact with. And so there's the get data function. And so we have to allow for the fact that some browsers will not be able to create XML HTTP request objects and so will not be able to be used with AJAX. So how do you how do you account for that? Well, you can simply put in a an if statement. If XML HTTP request object, you saw that originally this variable was set to false. So if the request object was not able to be created, then this if statement will fail. Now, on the other hand, if the object was created, then by default, any value that's not false is true in JavaScript, and this if statement will succeed. So this entire block inside the getData function is contained inside the if statement. We are first requiring that the XML HTTP request object exists. And if it doesn't exist, you can, if you like, you can use code that will handle, handle the situation in some way or another. For example, you might include an else statement like this. So you have if if the if statement up here fails, XML HTTP request object fails, you can execute the code in an else statement, and you first get the target div, that is the div that it, element in which all the text is displayed. This example is passed to this function as div ID. That's the ID of the function of the div element, and you say you can say document dot get element by ID that gets the fetches the actual element as an object that corresponds to this ID. So that is the target div is stored in the variable named object, and you can then just say object dot inner HTML equals and and post some message. Sorry, your browser does not support AJAX, for example. This inner HTML property of HTML element objects allows you to replace whatever text appears, whatever HTML appears inside the element easily in using JavaScript code. So in this case you just say object dot inner HTML equals sorry your browser does not support AJAX. That will replace the text which was originally the fetch data will go here. That text will be replaced by this error message. Sorry your browser does not support AJAX. So if you want to handle browsers that do not support AJAX and explain what's going on. You can use an else clause like this to your if statement if you prefer. You can also do more. You can actually try to get your application running. If the AJAX part is not essential, you can do what you need to do using, using pure JavaScript. You can enclose that JavaScript inside the else statement here. For example, you may want to display colors and so forth and be able to do that without reference to the server or data on the server. In that case you can provide alternate JavaScript code to work with the user as opposed to having to use AJAX. 
So those are both possibilities, and that's how you can handle the situation where the browser was not able to create an XML HTTP request object.